Success with AI depends on three factors as suggested by one of the research papers. First one is how complex the task is. Second one is how good of a developer you are. And the third one is how good you are at using AI tools. According to this report, AI increases developer productivity by 10 to 30%, but is it actually true? And what price are we paying for it? In this video, we're gonna look at the short-term productivity, how fast you can complete your tasks, and long-term productivity, or basically how effectively we can build and maintain software for years. We're gonna look at how AI is making it better or worse, and how can we maximize the benefits while minimizing the consequences. A small disclaimer, this video features some academic and research papers. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a researcher. I just read them because I was interested in the topic and I wanted to share it with you. If you want to read the original research, all the links are in the description. Let's start with the most basic thing that everybody wants to know, and it is how fast can I accomplish my tasks today so I can stop working and do something better. One of my favorite things that I've learned so far is that one study showed that you are more productive using AI tools if you know how to use AI tools. And I love it because it sounds super obvious, but it's not really because a lot of people are treating AI like a person. Think about all of the prompts when we are asking AI to acquire a personality, like a mature software engineer. And I mean, it does help to reduce the randomness of the responses and get a better response, sure. But in our minds, we think that we are talking to a mature software engineer, when in reality, we're talking to probabilistic model. More I dig into AI, more I understand that I'm using it completely wrong. And I think this will be one of the most underrated skills in the future, using AI correctly and using it efficiently. And just asking questions in the chat or fix all of my errors is not always the most efficient way to solve problems. I like that this paper highlights the idea of having a muscle to use AI, because of course, especially as an experienced software engineer, we don't have that habit to use AI for some of the things. And while you're getting used to it, it adds some kind of friction because in the moment you have to decide, is it faster to use AI for this task or is it faster to write it myself? Myself. And this is the question that I'm asking myself at least 10 times a day. Luckily, you don't have to decide it alone. And as this study shows, if AI tools are adopted within your team and you share the success stories with each other, the chances of success go up. But is this and every other paper out there confirms all of the time, the success is really far from uniform. Because as you can probably guess, AI is way better at simple greenfield tasks than it is at the complex brownfield task. One of the ongoing studies in Stanford is busy with exactly that. They don't show the results yet because I think the study is still in progress, but they did have a talk confirming that this pretty obvious assumption is indeed true. And this is exactly what they observed. I am looking forward to the results of the study because they are using AI to study the code written by AI, and this is some kind of inception I am totally in for. But these numbers alone don't tell us much. If you tell me that I am 30% more effective for the greenfield tasks, I'm going to say, sure, cool, thank you, and I'll just continue doing my work. But there was another study about using generative AI coding tools in the workplace, and it showed a lot of bits of information that I really like. It started with the perceptions of people that you have to use AI to stay relevant, and in fact, that might as well be true. Or at least that's what people think. This study mentioned that using generative AI tools increased the perception of being useful. And people also reported work being less boring. Having AI in my terminal is having a pair programming session the whole day long, except nobody's annoyed with me and nobody's watching me type. Not for real anyway. Which makes me think, do people report increased productivity just because they enjoy working with AI more? The funny thing is, they tracked some of the changes in perception and how people use AI over time, and apparently more people used AI, less trust they had in the results, which I can also agree with. Although some people reported that even if the output was not correct, they still got to think differently about the task at hand, and that helped. And in my personal opinion, I love it when AI highlights the knowledge gaps that I have, even though I still think that having an argument with AI is very difficult, because it's very easy to persuade AI to say something that's really not true. Another thing that appeals to me a lot is people reporting that starting a task became easier. There is low friction to start. There are less entry barriers. You can just ask AI to generate you a boilerplate or a POC and 
go with it. You can edit a bad page, but you cannot edit a blank one. There are also quite some problems highlighted in this paper. The most severe ones are that the code appears to be correct, but it's actually not. And this is incredibly difficult to notice. I mean, it happens with humans all the time, but as we'll see in the second part of this video, it can be way more severe with AI. And probably the most important part that I'm getting more and more concerned about myself, while we are allowing AI to generate stuff for us, we are losing these bits of understanding of our own systems. And we might not even notice that at first because we've read the code, so we know what it does. But in reality, think about the difference between reading something and trying to learn it by heart, word for word. Take a tiny poem and try to do it right now, and you will notice how many words, how many little nuances you missed when you were just reading it instead of actually reciting in this example. By the way, did you know that about a half of engineers don't actually review their AI-generated code? And not surprisingly, it takes longer to review than actual human generated code. I was just saying last week that I was so used to working with excellent developers that reviewing AI generated code is kind of a pain right now. And this is not the only study that didn't stop at we're gonna get 30% more productive. And one of the papers shows that AI can reduce productivity by 19%, at least in this particular case that they studied. They got 16 experienced open source developers and asked them to use AI to perform their tasks. Ask them what is the perception of the AI effectiveness in the beginning, and then they measured actual results in the code as well as they could. And as you could probably guess, doing complex tasks in the brownfield development by somebody who has very good knowledge of their code base, very big and mature code base, might I add, well, that did not go well. And the conclusion that I basically made for myself is that if you're a rock star, really cool senior engineer working on your own project that you know really, really well, you have to be really careful with AI tools because they will probably slow you down. But if you're an average person working on your average job and willing to learn new skills, then you'll probably get some gains. Maybe not tenfold, but you're 10 to 30 percent. But what about the long term? Studying AI long term kind of resembles studying some kind of new species that just appeared and we don't know anything about how it behaves. One of the most fascinating things I read for this video was AI code in the wild, measuring security risks of AI generated code. Because this paper basically states that AI behaves quite differently from a human developer. It introduces a lot of vulnerabilities, but it introduces a special kind of vulnerabilities. They are clustered in specific specific areas and each model, basically each way of training, post-training, fine-tuning the model, it has their own vulnerabilities that we can study and account for while building. The problem that I personally have with that approach is that while we are studying existing models, new models will appear and that probably will not be that useful, but we'll see how it goes. The paper also highlights the problem that right now all of the code generated by AI or humans is homogenous in the main branch, which means that we cannot really tell which code was generated by a human or AI. And to be fair, at least in my experience, a lot of the times I generate the code with AI, but then I still go through the code and I make manual changes to it. So basically I'm adding my own vulnerabilities to the AI specific vulnerabilities, which is a great plan for success. But I do like the idea of AI models having a risk profile that we have to account for. And maybe there will not be as many models in the future. A lot of people are concerned with AI models training on the synthetic data, basically AI being trained on data generated by AI. The error rate will multiply exponentially, and there is a chance that only the first models that were generated on human-only data will survive. Is it true? I, I don't think so. During this whole video we were talking about all of the new developments and new attempts to make sure that we can identify which content was generated by AI, and maybe we will succeed at this to a degree, but maybe this degree is enough for the new models to be trained. Like I mentioned, this new species really need some time to develop before we can study it. I have to say this research got me into some weird land of studying what a model collapse is, and I don't have enough AI knowledge to cover that. So if somebody knows how it works, you're probably not watching this video. But we keep talking about AI and the model clubs and oh no, new models are not going to be possible and oh no, we're going to have vulnerabilities. Yes, it's important. And yes, this is important, but it is about software. What does it do to 
people. I have to say I care more about uh, this than software. And this is something we probably should be worried about. I was pretty much familiar with the concept of cognitive offloading. It's when you write something down so you don't have to think about it anymore and then you forget it because you know that it's written down somewhere. And this was also a problem when internet became a thing because now we don't have to remember the facts, we can just look them up. But now it becomes even worse because if previously we used the cognitive offloading for storing the information, now we're starting to use it for processing the information and this is way worse. By letting AI write our code, make our decisions or make the implementation plans, we are reducing the main thing we are, the thinking. Overlines on AI can suppress active reasoning and critical engagement. People using AI actually score less on cognitive tests. So in a way, by using AI, we're becoming dumber and easier to manipulate, which is definitely not the topic I want to go in depth today, but it is something to think about. One of the most problematic points that I've noticed in the things that I've read was that we are getting cognitive underload, so we're thinking less, information overload, so AI is generating too much information, and then we also get cognitive fatigue if we try to actually verify and fact check whatever AI is saying. This is a problem for professions that require a lot of thinking, like ours still, and probably the best way to save your sanity is to make sure that you're still thinking and you're still applying your critical reasoning, but you do not go overboard and you not fact check every single thing that AI tells you. I think going forward, what we need is an automation system. We have check styles, we have linters, we have tests, we have this pipeline of checks for human generated code, and we need another step in this pipeline to make sure that the code generated by AI is not falling into one of the known AI fallacies. Obviously, it's going to be an AI system checking AI, but you know, we also have tests that are checking our own code and we write both. So this approach has its problems, but I think this is the only way I can see this being fixed.